uh, we, we have some time for, for questions. I also have questions uh, for, for them, but first, if anyone in the audience have a question, if not, I can, I can go ahead with my questions for, for, for them. Okay, I'll, I'll go first, and if anyone has questions, then I will, I'll pass the mic. You have a question? Okay, good. So let, let's do a round of questions, and then we can all reply. <laughs> okay, so for, for Urangu, I had a, a couple of questions. Um, I, first, a clarification question was, how do you construct the, the index, the, the index of, of uh, inequality? Uh, I was curious to know a bit more about that. Uh, and then I have, a, I have one question on, on the relationship you're trying to get at. Uh, I would have thought that a predictor of more child mortality is lower access to, to the quality of, I'm sorry, Lack of access to uh, high quality water, right? Uh, to clean water. But I wasn't sure why the inequality within a country, and the, unless I, mean, I misunderstood the, the index, why inequality within a country in the access to clean water uh, has implications for the absolute rate of, mor of mortality. I'm thinking if what we should be predicting perhaps is inequality of water is predicting inequality of mortality within the, the country. Or if the levels of access to clean water predicts the levels of access, sorry, the levels of mor mor mortality. Th those were my, my, my questions for you. Um, for D, uh, I had a question which is, can you, can you look at health outcomes? Uh, you were already getting into it when you were looking at doctor appointments and, and so on. But can, can you have an, an, an outcome that is the health status, basically, of the, of the person to know if the overall reform is, is uh, having an impact on the, on the health status of, of these people? And the second question I had is, uh, why, why do we care so much about that gap, that difference of beta 4 and beta 5 that you had in your, in your slide? My interpretation from what I saw is that there is catch up of the rural area with the urban employed, yes. uh, and that to me is really very salient. Uh, I don't know why, we, why would we care necessarily about the other gap, the, the gap of where they are catch up in the same speed, so to, so to say. To, the, it seems like for inequality, this, this one catch up uh, on beta four or beta five that you had was already quite relevant. And, and that's, that's all on my side. I don't know if anyone has uh, questions. I'll go over here, and then I'll, I'll come back over there. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, um, I have another question for the that's actually related to that uh, last question, and it has to do with the gap that you construct. So as far as I understand, the gap is urban and rural gap, right? But uh, your control group in, in, is in, in itself uh, like composed of urban people. So when you're comparing beta four and beta five, you, you ha you're having like an urban employed uh, population. Is it employed or not, not employed? So the, the beta four. Uh, I don't recall. Uh, uh, the rural. Yeah. yeah, so I'm not entirely sure if, if like consistent with the last question, if that is the gap that sh you should, you might want to look at, but perhaps you could go ahead and take the mean of your control group, which is the urban population, the urban unemployed population, and just take the coefficients and uh, look at how much you know the, the mean is changing with respect to the urban group, because what you, what you're having is uh, two coefficients which are like both of them with res are, are giving you an interpretation with respect to the control group, which is indeed, uh, okay, do you have it there? Which is the urban uh, not employed population. Um, so I'm not entirely sure if that gap has uh, the type of meaning that you, you intended, or maybe I'm just not understanding it correctly. So this is the first DID, and the, the first DID would uh, uh, measure the change in the gap between the uh, urban employed population and uh, urban resident population, the urban not employed population. Uh, and uh, the second DID is between the top green line and the bottom blue line. That measures the change of gap uh, between urban employees and uh, rural residents. So if you do a diff for 
these two different diff, then the, they will show the differential of change in gap, which is also the, uh, the change in gap between uh, urban residents and rural residents. You can also look at the illustration here. So this is delta 1, this is the first diff and diff. This is the second diff and diff. So if you do a diff between, del between delta 1 and delta 2, that will be the change of gap between these two blue lines. Yes. Yes. Uh, the this is just a control group. This is a benchmark. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh huh. Uh, when I say urban rural, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I say urban rural gap, I'm specifically referring to these two populations. I'm not referring to the the gap between urban employee and uh, rural resident. Because the consolidation only consolidates these two groups. So these uh, urban employees, they are not impacted by the consolidation. So my evaluation is only using them as the control group, as a, as a benchmark. Uh, yeah, the, the, how do you say, the, the, the illustration is a little bit complicated, and this is also pointed out by the the reviewer <laughs> of the of the journal. Yeah. Um, as for uh, questions from Javier, so um, I do have the 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 data uh, the data set or do have uh, uh, variables like uh, uh, self-rated health, which is very how do you say uh, subjective, and um, we're pretty much worried that the urban people and urban employed people and rural people, they will have different perception of health. So maybe the, the same disease and, uh, uh, well, rural people will think it's no big deal, but urban people will be like, think it's very serious. So we probably don't think it's very comparable for the self-related health. And for more objective uh, things like, uh, uh, for example, the blood pressure stuff, uh, the survey did not uh, cover that. So, yeah, um, I think that could be a future, uh, um, how do you say, future study, a uh, future direction for studies if the such uh, data is, such variables are available, particularly for the very subjective medical measures like, for example, blood pressure and uh, things like that. And the second question, what was that question? <laughs> oh, the yeah, yeah, I, I see. Yes, yes. Why, why, why is it important? Oh, okay. I think it's more related to ideology. I guess, like it's more of a political thought that uh, the I mean, equalness is equality is just very important. Like it doesn't matter if you're in the urban area or rural area because. Bef like many, how I would say, uh, even today the urban and rural inequality is still very large, and uh, just catching up with the the, the urban uh, employees, I we think is probably not enough. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for the question. These two questions are really. <laughs> <laughs> really uh, thought-provoking, actually. I, I've been prepared a bit. So the, your first question was about the estimation of um, um, CI what variable. So water access what, uh, data was collected from JMP data set, but it, it, it's, it's correct that there is different levels of uh, services. And why I concentrated on only one of them is that the, um, the idea behind it is that the uh, households have water access uh, depending on uh, differentiated water access depending on their wealth groups, but still uh, the, ba the, the households or the population having uh, basic uh, access to water uh, can be also uh, grouped down into the different wealth groups as well. So uh, when it comes to the low middle income country setting, not every family or every household has, uh, has a one single type of access. 
So therefore, like uh, depending on the wealth groups, even these uh, different five types of uh, wealth groups have differentiated access to the basic uh, water services. Yeah, that is the uh, main reason. And um, and in, uh, the second point is that the the service level is, indica is an indicator of the water quality itself because uh, the better quality, better health outcomes, more infected, uh, worse outcomes, right? So therefore, I try to concentrate on the um, highest possible uh, quality level that, was, uh, that, that has available data. So that, that happened to be the basic one. And then um, the third point is that the concentration index approach was um, estimated based on the wealt quantiles. So the JMP data groups down the, all the population data into uh, the wealth quantiles. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there was a second question, right? Yeah, I almost forgot about it. So uh, basically, uh, I, uh, did I understand correctly? It is that the levels of water quality, how it actually, how the levels of water quality actually predicts the levels of, um, actually predict the entire child mortality. Yeah. So, right. What, what I was thinking is if you're looking at a measure of inequality, uh -huh. and then you're looking at a level of mortality in the country, right? Mm -hmm. And I wonder if one should look at a measure of inequality on access, mm -hmm. and a measure of inequality in mortality, mm -hmm. or a measure of access mm -hmm. to uh, quality of water and a level of mortality. Right? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I wonder if we should look at Inequality and inequality, or level and level, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's actually a very valid point. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea behind it is that still uh, the differences uh, between uh, differences in access to quality water mm -hmm. still exist between the different wealth groups. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's the reason why I brought this inequality in access uh, variable uh, to check whether there is impact in uh, child mortality, specifically caused by the, uh, the Patagon uh, diarrhea. Yeah. Uh, diarrhea causing Patagon, yeah, that is the reason behind. But the, this, va this point is very valid, and since this paper is still uh, under progress, mm -hmm. I will consider it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I, I, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I have a question for Rangu. So I uh, saw you use uh, both the fixed effect model and the uh, uh, random effects model. So did you do a Hausman test to see which one is the better fit for the, for the situation here? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> It must be somewhere here. Yeah. So Hausman test was actually uh, uh, run to decide whether fixed effects or random effects model. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the result indicated that the fixed effect model was a better fit. Better fit. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. But uh, for all OLS model, uh, whether I I wanted to choose, you know, okay. FE over random effects, then whether FE over LS, I needed to decide that, right? Okay. And that consideration was, um, I will show you my empirical model. That consideration was because of this alpha, which actually uh, the country specific constant term where unobservable effects are embodied. So this is not the case for all this model. That's why I consider FS is better okay. fit. Well, good morning. Thank you so much for your presentations. My question is for Javier. Well, I was wondering how was your parallel trends checking <laughs> or test? Uh, your parallel trends mm -hmm. test, how was it? And I was thinking that what is so is that you have a drop in the price and you were exploiting that change in different cohorts, but 
after the drop, you also have a rise. So you can also like kind of do similar exercises in those cohorts. I don't know if you had the opportunity of doing that kind of, ex of exercises and what was the results if you had the opportunity. Thank you. No, no questions. Okay. Uh, so first, the thank you. The um, do you have the yeah the pointer. Thank you. The parallel trends. I have them here. Um, this is this is a parallel trend. So first, before doing the parallel trends, we looked into the prediction that um, males are more likely to die than than females, and that's something we pick up in pretty much all of the uh, pred predictions. Let's, let's focus for the sake of time here. This is a log cohort size. And males, according to uh, these researchers, it should be dying. They're more likely to die both in utero and during early life. And we see for the panel of males that they are more likely to die. Women are not quite uh, more likely to die in statistical uh, significance terms, but the, the signs are, are what we would expect. Now, we, we then, in the paper, looked at the parallel trend. So we, we tried to predict missing children by, by gender. So the cohort sizes, we count them by, by males and females only. And uh, this is a drop in 1995. Uh, this is the control cohort in 1994. What you see on the red line is the, the price. And uh, that, that's the point estimate. And males are here and females are here. So it's quite flat here. And then it drops for males. It does not drop a whole lot for, for women. Um, what, what we see later, answering your second question, if we, we look at uh, the extended graph, uh, they, they do follow the pattern of the, of the price. Now, the problem with making causal estimations with the pattern of the price uh, that is over here, this one here, so your, your second question was, why don't we take advantage of this, right? Um, we were trying to make very careful identification of where children are born, and there's, that there shouldn't be any expected variation on where you know, they're deciding to relocate and so on. In fact, one could show estimates from 1996, which is still a very uh, low uh, price. But then the problem here is that there are behavioral responses confounding the measure of mortality. There is a Plan Colombia over here, or over here, I think, uh, which increases the the, the 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 price because there is a, a shift basically of the of the of the production uh, again and also the, the cancellation of this policy. This we cannot really tell if they are as exogenous, as exogenous of, of this first drop. So we, we don't use him as the main identification of the paper. But there have been people asking about this this upper part. So we're considering perhaps we should include a section where we where we show the the, the follow uh, of the mortality rates across the, the, the prices as supportive evidence that you know this continues to hit, but not, not as much of the of the um, causal effect of the price drop. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Those are good questions. Okay. So if there are no any remaining questions, okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much to to everybody. It was a pleasure, and uh, have a good rest of your day. Thank you.